today I'm super happy that I get to have Susie be together with me and talk about high school choices. Whether you are seven, eighth graders considering going to um, a private high school or a public school, what are the ins and outs? And if you're already in a high school, whether it's private or public, how do you leverage the resources the most to help you plan for your high school and get into your dream college with ease and confidence? So I've been working with Susie for quite some time now, and I truly admire her wealth of knowledge and insights about high school. And just um, for everybody's uh, knowledge that uh, Susie for 12 years um, was the former admissions director at Swarthmore College, which is one of the top liberal arts colleges in the United States. But for the last decade, She's been working as a high school college counseling director at three different high schools, and the latest one being one of the very prestigious private school, Baldwin. And prior to that, Susie received her degrees from University of Chicago, and Susie is our um, council advisory board. And this year, she will be cheering our CAP members, working with many other former admissions officers and the top educators to help us grow and develop the platform. So I'm super happy. And Susie, you are joining us from uh, Philly. And with that, Susie, the floor is yours. Great. So folks, I'm so happy to join you and talk about how to decide um, whether or not to pursue your high school um, career or middle school career um, in private or public school. So I'll have about 40 minutes um, to do that for you. So today we'll go over what the most important factors are when you're considering public or private school and talk a little bit about, well, how do colleges view your school choice if you have one? and then receive an overview about applying to a highly selective private school, independent school in the United States. So if you have a choice, it's always beneficial to consider where you will be best served for your secondary education. Uh, your public school, for example, everyone in the US has um, an option for a public school, but sometimes it might not be a good fit. It could be either too big or too small, or just academically, it might be not a good fit for you, um, or not offer any of the extracurriculars that you feel like you could really, um, you know, be fantastic in. And sometimes, unfortunately, it could also be for social reasons, um, where it's just difficult for you to be healthy socially in school. And that's where it's very important for you, for you to feel safe and for you to feel like you're um, edified socially in school as well, because you spend so much time um, in school as well as uh, with in relationship to your peers and your teachers. So I, I want to start with some common myths and misconceptions, uh, because a lot of times people have asked me, oh, well, Susie, you know, definitely going to a private school is better than a public school, right? And that's not true. Uh, there in the US, there are very, really a lot, a lot of very rigorous public schools across the nation. Um, and some, some public schools have greater rigor than some private schools. So it's, it's really hard to compare them and make a blanket statement that one is better than the other as well as when I used to be at Swarthmore as an admission director, people would ask me all the time, well, I go to this private school and it's really competitive. And so it, that, if I got a B, it's better than getting an A at the public school, correct? And I would have to tell them, no, <laughs> um, it's based on the context of your school. So if that, if uh, in your school, everybody got a B in that class, then in the context of it, then it might be okay, right? Um, but if you are one of the students, if let's say the class is 25 students and eight got A's and you got a B, that means eight people did, were able to do it. So we look at that, that context of that. And also just saying going to a private school or an independent school um, will get you into a highly selective college 
is, is not true. Uh, uh, highly selective colleges take students from every kind of school, whether it's a private school, a very um, competitive public school or a not competitive public school or a not competitive private school or home school or international school or et cetera, et cetera. So it, it doesn't matter. They, they're selecting students and not necessarily schools. This is just a slide that just recently, I think a lot of a lot of people have um, noticed that the you know it used to be that more private schools. This is perhaps how the rumor started that more private uh, school students got into the top thirty or so universities. But as you see overall, um, in the past couple of years, this is the most recent data is from two thousand nineteen. But um, the past couple of years, you'll see that overall public school students are getting in to these top 30 uh, universities at a higher percentage than, um, than the, you know, 62% of public school students get into those schools versus 60% of private school students. And you could see even uh, going to fall of 2019 that the, the ratio is even bigger, right? Um, that there was a shift there where 72% um, of public school students got into the top 30%, 30 universities versus private school. So again, this is just to show you that both kinds of students get into schools and it's one is um, not necessarily better than the other. It's, it flip flops sometimes and uh, there's usually just an average. So, um, like I said, there's many different reasons. Usually it'll be because it's not, your current school is not a good fit. Um, a lot of private schools sometimes have a distinctive learning philosophy. Some of them are more STEM focused or they're more humanities focused or music focused uh, because private schools can do that, uh, whereas public schools have to be broad. Um, extracurricular activities might be more tailored. They might be a really athletic school. And so you want to attend that kind of school because you want to be on the best athletic teams. Um, also, private schools can offer uh, more personalized support because you're paying lots of tuition to attend private schools. So they'll give you that option as well as the option of boarding if you want to have boarding experience. Um, some students really, really love that. So then what matters? What matter? Why would I choose? You know, what matters during college admission is that colleges will want to see that you made the most of the school that you did attend. So sometimes students don't have a choice and they have to just attend whatever school that is in their district, right? Um, so did you make the most of that? Or if you chose a private school, did you make the most of that experience? Uh, did you take the most um, challenging courses? Did you get involved and show leadership or show breadth or depth in your extracurricular involvement at the school? Things like that in terms of impact. So that really is the name of the game when you're thinking of highly selective college admission is they want to know not just how many things you've done or what you've done, but what kind of impact have you made through every one of your choices.